All right, let's keep going. So, the battle has just concluded. You have emerged victorious after encountering a grotesque creature and a small party to support it. You have lost sight of one of your assailants. You now survey the battlefield, having just reached the conclusion of this skirmish. Hmm. I'm going to walk back toward the center where we can all talk. Uh, and I'm also going to loot the withered body. So as you begin to rummage through the, the withered body, you, you realize that there's actually nothing on this creature. It, it seemed to rely entirely upon its raw physical form to impact any kind of damage whatsoever. And as you, as you come over, as you're investigating, you see all the, the wounds that you've left, but you also notice that all of those patches of kind of matted fur seem to have shriveled and withered along with the rest of the form until they are, are very dry and, and barely substantial. As you are investigating this, Hosk comes over and a, there's a curious and strange look over his face and he is far more intent on this body than anything else. And as he looks down, he appears to kind of survey the creature almost, kind of picking up an arm and investigating it, grabbing the jaw, opening it, and looking, turning the face back and forth. Uh, make an investigation check, Morris. <laughs> disadvantage. With disadvantage, no, wait, because you are level 2 exhaustion. You don't notice what it is that Hosk is looking for, but he does seem to be looking for something very intently. Honos, Sorwin, and Theon, what are you doing? Um, I would like to... Do I see uh, Hosk? Like... Really Hosk, searching, from your kind of. from your point of view, Hosk is kneeling down at the body of of whatever this creature was that attacked, and he is he is searching seemingly uh, for something. Okay, I'd like to go up to him and ask him what he's you know. Ask him what's going on. Because I've never seen him like that before. So you ask him in Draconic what it is he's looking for, and he offers you no response. He's just he's looking with increasing concern. And as you um, uh, make an investigation check, or no, uh, make a perception check, Theon. Oh yay! Here comes the zero. <laughs> oh okay. Not that bad. It's, it, it was a nineteen. So as you. He doesn't respond to you, but as you're looking at him, what he does seem to do is stop at points on the f on the the flesh of this creature and kind of grab some of the the desiccated and dried flesh and kind of pull it taut from its wrinkled state as if he's investigating what's on there. And you look and you see markings and what appear to have been uh, ta like tribalistic tattoos, but the flesh is now weathered and cracking and is is actually. As he pulls it taut, some of it actually just breaks apart and tears away. And you can hear the, the kind of exasperated breathing from it. And as he is, is searching along this creature, he eventually takes the skull, which has been partially removed from the severity of the blow dealt by Morris. He grasps it, and you see him close his eyes, and a long, drawn-out exhale escapes his form. Just um, and you see him pull the head towards his, and he places his forehead against the forehead of this creature, and then pulls away, leaning down, scooping up what remains of the body, and actually carrying it with him. I take it you knew him. He doesn't say anything to you, but he does look and nod his head once. He then says to you, We must go. 
where. Should we keep going to the east? Are you discussing this with your party? Uh, I'm talking to Hosk because he seems like he wants to go somewhere, so I'm asking him. Like... Okay. So while this has been going on, Mindardus has been rummaging through some of the bodies of the two closest lizard folk to him. Uh, so Sorwin and Honos, what have you been doing? Honos, you found your dagger. Found and um, yeah, actually, as you were doing that, as you were kind of reaching down, stooping up, and picking up the dagger, you... Through line of sight, you managed to spot where that clearing was. And you just everything kind of lines up and you get this perfect peephole view of of that spot that all of you saw from the top of the cliff. And you realize it's not terribly far away. That's where the bed is, right? That's where two forms were. You couldn't really make out anything beyond non-distinct dark blurs. Sorwin, what are you doing? Uh, is there any other guys that I can loot that are around me? Or did Morris loot them? Uh, Morris has not looted. There are two more to the north. There is one unconscious lizard folk that was rendered unconscious by Hosk's fists, and one that is dead. He was actually beaten to death. Uh, I, I can't walk that far anyways. I don't have that much movement. Um, sure you can. The, no, you're you're not in combat anymore. Oh, no, combat thing. has okay. ended. Yeah, I'm gonna go up there and loot those guys. Make an investigation check. Oh, uh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay, roll 2d4. Oh. Oh, yeah. uh, you find on the two of them 70 gold. Oh, shit, I'm rich. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, are we just heading north to the clearing then? Is that it? Is that what we're doing? Or... It has not been decided where your group okay. is heading. I mentioned that I am interested in heading north to the clearing. I say we continue on the path we were taking before. Whatever, wherever we're supposed to go. I follow Hona. It may just be the blood in my eyes, but I think it's getting dark and time for a long nap. Oh, yeah. the, the sun is beginning to set. The, the sky is starting to darken along its, uh, its eastern half. As you stare off into the forest, you begin to notice the increasing deep blues and purples and the the cascading of sunlight across clouds that implies that the setting sun is encroaching. Well, you guys find a place to hot, to sleep, and I'll go check out the clearing. How's that sound? Uh, okay. Uh, do you let's uh sleep in the canopies? How how easy are these trees to climb? How do we get these canopies? I mean, I can. You're a druid, aren't you? Yeah, I'm Couldn't cool. You I'm, I'm worried about the... some awesome hammocks. Uh, whoa! Can I? Yes. I don't know. Can you? I don't know. How do I do this? Well, like druid craft is essentially it's like you're kind of bringing forth a proliferance of nature oh nearby to you. So okay. you can you could grow grass, you could grow vines, uh, in. Critical role, Keyleth grows like spiderweb hammocks at one point. Oh my god. Okay, I wanna I wanna make the most magnificent, beautiful tree hidden canopy with the emphasis on hidden uh to <laughs> to house us for the night. Uh okay, so Mindardis is going to help you in trying to conceal it. So okay. I would like you to make a nature check with advantage. Uh, how do I do that? The advantage. Just roll it. Just roll your nature check. And the higher number. I rolled it. Come on! Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it would be the most magnificent. So, you, uh, you, in, in your excitement, you're looking around for different trees or, or kind of, you know, something you can, uh, you can use to form a kind of a safe, but concealed uh, roof or roost within the canopy. 
and you think you picked the right tree and you, you start trying to climb it, you're having a lot of difficulty trying to climb it. it takes you about 10, 15 minutes, but you manage to make it up there. And you just start. You basically grab your hand against one of the branches and then pull backwards. And extending from your hand are uh, thick vines that you you kind of anchor to another branch and then you kind of continue this. You essentially build in a spider web like way uh, with a combination of plant matter and uh, and you know simple animal construct like spider silk. You manage to create something to sleep on. We'll see how well it holds up. <laughs> is it beautiful? And are there like like fireflies dancing around? No um, fireflies. No fireflies? That's right, yeah, with darkness, <laughs> darkness. <laughs> um it you know, from the ground it certainly looks like there's something in the tree, but from above it would be it would be pretty well concealed. Okay. Good. All right, so what direction are you all heading? Into the canopies to sleep. Okay, but from where you are? Like, are you just going to use the canopies right here where you are at the site of this battle? Isn't that why you made the hammocks? Yeah, I made them, I made them in one of these You made them places. right here? <laughs> I thought that was the point. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just I'm trying to, I'm trying to <laughs> no, make sure uh, yeah. I understand. Yeah. So, okay, all right, so... I'm going to say, I'm going to say, like, in this, in this, like, the, the, the northern bush area... Okay, so like, yeah, like, like here-ish. Like I want to sleep like right here. All right, so like within the canopy, you've made your uh, yeah, you've made your all right. home. Home. Okay, so you've you've kind of made this network of of plant matter to try and house everybody for the evening. You see, Hosk is has laid down at the foot of the tree that you're working in the the corpse that he picked up earlier. And is beginning to move around and collect as much dry wood as he can. Honos, you are going to check out the clearing? Yep. All right. You arrive at the clearing, it is, it is wide out in front of you, and it's laying in the center of it are, now that you're closer, make a perception check. So are you just walking up there? Are you stealthing up there? What I'm are you stealthing. doing? Okay, make your stealth roll. Okay. All right, so... As you get to the clearing, you're kind of creeping up to one of the trees and you begin to peer around. Uh, you don't notice anything in the perimeter of this area. The trees are beginning to become a little bit more sparse, so this is a fairly wide clearing. Uh, it's, gonna, it's roughly 80 feet or so to, to the, the figures in the center. And uh, I'd say from those figures, it's another 90 to 100 feet. Uh, till the next grouping of trees, uh, and in pretty much an equal distance if you were to go uh, in in a lateral direction from that point. So they're they're located almost in the middle of this clearing, and as you look now, you see that it is it is two humanoid shapes laying in the ground. Can I discern anything else about them? Uh, you can see that one of them is lying down on its face with one arm pointed in actually a, in your direction the the way the body is lying there is its arm is kind of extended towards you the other figure is lying on its back and neither of them are moving you see a crow fly in and land on one of the bodies yeah i, I got that hop around Peck at something and then take off. I'm gonna go back and tell. Uh, uh what's his face? I 
I forget Drax's name. Theon. 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 I'm gonna tell Theon to tell to tell to describe this of uh, this scene to Hosk and ask him if he knows what this means. I relay the information. So you ask Hosk this as he begins to walk. Uh, he he disappeared for a short time and then has come back from the south and is holding in his hand a couple of pieces of rock. And he begins to move towards where he's amassed uh, an amount of dried wood and begins striking the two stones together. Does not respond to your question. Well, he's useless. Um, while, uh, where, where is Hosk at this point in time? Uh, Hosk is basically, he's about here, uh, and where the X is, is roughly where he seems to be amassing the pile of wood. So no, actually, he would be right around there, because he's trying to, to strike it. Uh, as, so he, after this long pause, the only words that Hosk utters is, Sounds like dead men and then continues striking the rocks, trying to catch a spark to this bunch of kindling he's amassed. Is everybody down south where they are right now? Uh, no, Mindardus has recollected with the group. He's actually helping Sorwin trying to uh, conceal the canopy hammocks. So Sorwin will be up here, and Morris, what have you been doing during this time? I want to go to sleep. I've been trying to climb the tree into the hammocks. Make an athletics check. Mm, with disadvantage. <laughs> it's not too difficult. You're a little bit sore, and it takes you a little longer than it would if you were, you know, unexpended, but you manage to haul yourself up into the tree. You have to and I pass out. You, you pass out. You lie face down into the hammock. You hear it begin to squeak a little bit under the strain of your weight. And as your eyes are closing, you're just kind of staring at the, the <laughs> ruined form of the lizard folks that you have you beat at this site <laughs> as could, unconsciousness begins to take could, you. Could I perhaps cast Mage Hand to like slowly <laughs> rock him to sleep? You Push can absolutely it. do that. Sweet. I'm doing that. Um... But, it makes me fall asleep faster. Yeah. Uh, the snoring begins to permeate Hosk, the area. Hosk is still uh, out there building a fire, right? Yes. Okay, at this point in time, I'd like to like whisper and using Morris's like, you know, snores as a kind of like a mask, I whisper to Soren Mindardis and Honos and I tell them what Arari told me about uh, Hosk, and that he might be having a second task that he might be doing, and I was told to be careful. Does does he say how he knows this information? Uh, Theon, you have to describe what it is that you say. Also, you're... Okay, yes. So finish what you're going to do. Arari said as he passed through the gate that she had a really bad feeling about him and to, to be careful around him. She says she still trusts my, my judgment, but to keep an, keep an eye on him, so to speak. Is this a gut? Is this a gut feeling or a magic feeling? A magic feeling. Well, it's it's something to consider. Worst comes the worst. We'll just get rid of him too. Now, Hono, so you're going to describe what it is that you found in the clearing? Yeah. Well, I described it when I told it to. Ah, oh, yes, when you, you told it to Hosk, and, and he gave you his rather blunt response. Um, so, Theon, Morris, I'll assume, Morris, you heard this before you went to sleep. Uh, so, Theon, Morris, Sorwin, and Mindardis, you are informed as to what it is Hono saw in that clearing that all of you were able to spot from the top of the cliff. And what was that one more time? 
two dead men pointed in pointed in specific positions. Okay. Either pro likely meant to be a sign or a ritual. Hmm. I'm not too worried. You're asleep. The HPG said he heard it before. We'll, we'll say that that was what he said before he went to sleep. After hearing this information. <laughs> I'm not worried. And then... So Honos, as you, uh, as you were coming back from your uh, scouting mission, you can recognize the area that you're in by the, the bodies of the slain lizard folk. Yeah, I'm gonna find a, a place to sleep in the canopy a little further away that's not as conspicuous as these dangerous looking hammocks. Make a survival check. <laughs> 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 Did you want to ask for Mindardus' help? Nah. All right. Uh, looking around, you don't find too many places that are are going to be comfortable. You do find some trees you can climb if you wanted to make an athletics check to see if you can climb the tree. I'll just hide in a bush. All right. You successfully find a bush. <laughs> oh, yeah. He is at home in the bush. bush. He comes it's from kind of, Australia. It's kind of buffeted up against uh, a large couple of tree trunks, so it's fairly, fairly concealed. You think? Fairly. All right. So Theon and Sorwin, what are you two doing? Um, I'm going to sleep up into the hammocks. Yeah. All right. As the two of you climb up into the ham the hammocks, you see Hosk has succeeded in starting his fire. And as the as the night wears on, he enters kind of a meditative stance as the flames just begin to kick up. He's not adding anything to the fire as the night goes on. He lets it burn down fairly readily into uh, into the evening as it continues. And we're already asleep while this is going on. You're just kind of describing the scenery. Yes. Well, I mean, you can you can wake up if you want. Or, um, so also, nobody's staying up to watch? Uh, okay. So I'm already asleep. Yep. All right, so everyone is asleep. All right. There goes the encounter dice. As the as the evening wears on, <laughs> you all one by one awaken from your sleep. The cool morning air has kind of condensed dew on all the leaves, the nearby grass. And as you slowly begin to awaken, you notice that seemingly peaceful. Not a lot going on in the immediate vicinity. We'll say that, uh, Morris, you are the first to wake up. So, by the way, everyone's hit points are fully restored. Uh, you, Morris, you can remove one level of exhaustion. I gain all sorcery points back, right? You gain all your sorcery points back, all your spell slots back. Honos, you fully heal. My no damage taken. Your no damage taken. You have healed from your no damage. I take one point, hit point of damage for healing so much. <laughs> Overheal. It hurts you heal so much. How many points you, of damage? Uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so as as the group of you come down, uh, you see that Hosk has not moved from the position he was in before. However, the body that he had picked up before is no longer visible. 
And as you descend from the trees, you see that Hosk moves from his his meditative stance. The dew that's actually been collecting on his body, given his stillness, it shifts and uh, a small series of droplets cascade off of his form as he begins to move. And the sunlight coming in from the eastern horizon begins to hit his form and warm his body. He moves forward very slowly and sluggishly, kneeling down and reaching into the ashes of the fire pit. And he begins to rub some of the ashes against his his head and his skull. The substance seemingly sticking to the, the wet skin and dyeing it a marked gray. Hmm. He kneels for a moment at the edge of the fireplace and then brings himself up to his fullest height, breathes in deeply, and exhales, is turning the, towards... Yeah? Is the fire still going? It, there's only the slightest hint of embers now. It's pretty much nothing but ash. Okay. Let's, let's continue on the original path we were, meant to, we were going to take and get there as... Hopefully, unencountery as possible. I agree. By the way, what time was it when we fell asleep at? Um, sundown. Your sundown. best estimate, yeah, is just around okay. sundown. So roughly six or seven p.m. Okay. What is that? Winter. Well, you're on a particularly low plane, so the horizon is unnecessary is abnormally high given where you are. Anyway, so the group carries on forward uh, as you head northward, being led by Hosk and Mendardis. You pass by the clearing that Honos had mentioned earlier, and it's maybe 20 or so feet to your right hand side. From here, each and every one of you can see the bodies that are laying there. There appears to be one that is face down one arm extended, and another is laying on its back and just looking up into the sky. I'd say we walk up to the dead bodies. I say we don't. Can we shoot an arrow? Should we shoot an arrow at the dead bodies? And more... Maybe. Uh, Mendardis says, yeah, I can hit that from here. It's not moving. Uh, perhaps we could have our druid owl fly around and take a look at the scene before we press on. Oh, we could do that too. Let's do that. I'm all down for hitting one of the bodies with an arrow, but... We could do both. We could hit point, a body Mid and then. Midardis has the arrow like notched and drawn. He's like, so hit the body? No. Hit the body. Hit the no. body. Hit the body. Hit the body. Hit the body. <laughs> he lets go of the arrow oh, and it God. careens through the air, <laughs> sinks into the side of one of the bodies. Nothing happens. Congrats. All right. Now they know even more which direction we're going. Not if we nothing nothing happened. Let's not go out there and find out nothing else happens. Let's just leave. <laughs> Alright, let's Dardis, continue on. <laughs> Mindardis states flatly, I can get the arrow. It's not going to be hard. And begins to walk forward towards where he shot the bunny. I yell that he no. shouldn't walk forward. He should he, stop. Don't, don't walk forward. Negative. Yeah. He stops. He's only made it about five or six feet. And turns towards you. Nothing happened. Yet. Alright, let's continue back to the east. Is that where we were going? <clears throat> uh, no, you were you were heading north. Because you were trying to approach the lizard folk from the west. So you've got, as, to head, you've got to head north as far as you can before turning west. As we're walking, I'd like to ask Honos what his background is. Because I don't know that much about him. Like, where he came from. 
I was on the mainland before I was uh, uprooted from my life in the city and transported here by the god's will, which has not been the first time such a thing has happened. What was your job back then? Because you seem rather skilled. I stab people occasionally. <laughs> Oh. Usually they deserve it. Okay, well, on for the quest to find more people that deserve it. I hope not. I don't like stabbing much. Well, Morris does. I like cutting and chopping. <laughs> yeah, he's not much of a stabber. <laughs> I'm sure if you gave him something wicked enough, he would definitely stab with it. Possibly a branch or a oh, spike. Did I notice the mage hand rocking me to sleep last night? Um, no, you know what? You were too exhausted. You didn't notice. Oh, okay. It put you to sleep faster. He was um, on the way to sleep, and this just accelerated that process. Uh, he's not aware of how quickly he's fallen asleep, really. Um, Sorwin, roll a d20. Okay. We're all gonna die. That's good. That's gonna be good. Anytime. The, the DM just makes his roll dice yeah. without Come warning. On! Oh my <laughs> god. That's one of my hold on. This mail truck. Roll a d8. We're all gonna die. <laughs> it's okay, this is how many levels you're gonna get randomly. Oh, fuck, levels! I fucking forgot, I'm sorry. Everyone that is level 4 leveled up to level 5. Oh, oh my yeah. god. That's what? crazy. Wow, thank you for saying that. I totally fucking forgot. Oh, I was... I, I didn't know anything about it, I was just saying levels. No, that that was my bad, man. I, I meant to say that as you guys went to sleep last night. Oh. Yes, everyone that is four is now five, so add your cool. appropriate abilities, feel free to roll your dice, all do of that we jazz. Get an extra hit dice, or how does that work? Yeah, how do I get... I don't know. You, you gain a hit dice, yes, because you are now level five. You always have the same amount. Your maximum hit dice equals your level, your total level. Oh, okay. So I um, uh, just gained one total health, health point. Oh, no. You rolled a one? Yep. Oh, no. Well, okay. I'll tell you what. Don't you, don't don't you add I'll, constitution? I'll, I'll do the same. Um, I'll do the same. Where his constitution modifier, I think, is zero. Uh, wow. I'll give you the same option I did for some of my friends. I'll let you re-roll it, but if you roll max, you don't get that. No, I'll just keep it. You'll keep the one? Okay. I'll keep the one. So I just roll a 1d8 for my for my health increase? Or you yeah, can just take the average. Yeah, just spend a hit dice if you want. Or yes, or yes, you can take the average. I'm, I'm, just doing, I'm just doing the average. I'm just doing the rolling to be silly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 2 plus your constitution modifier, and that's how oh. much health you gain. That is... So Theon, you were level 4, so you gain, uh, you gain some HP as well. Yes, I gain... Uh, I'm just going to gain the 4 <laughs> off of my D6. You're going to gain your 4 plus your con mod? And the... Resilience. Oh, and the draconic yes. thing, yes. Okay, so, so add four, that to your, uh, six, your health total. Seven. Ooh, 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 baby. I get more sneak attack. Snurk Turk. Snurk. Oh yeah, I get haste, I get conjure animals, I can now have like a wolf or a bear pack, and I can be a bear too. Oh my god! Oh, uh, HPG. Hello? Um, it says that I can, uh, upon, you know, gaining a new spell, I can forget one of my other spells and replace it with another spell. Correct. Could I just do that later while we're not playing to keep things moving? Certainly you can. And just let you know then. Okay. 
Okay, I get six spells now. Oh my god, I get thunder or call lightning. Oh my god, how exciting! Ooh, two slots for third. Thankfully, rogue levels are super simple. What are? Leveling rogue, rogue levels. is really simple. Oh, really? Yeah, what do you... Just... <laughs> you, 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 you don't really gain much. Huh. That's complicated, at least. Yeah, it's like pretty much in like the description of what you're doing. So, yeah. Huh. Like... Fucking sneak attack. Snurk Turk. Snurk Turk. It's the snook. This is awesome. I can like throw haste on people. I can make Ooh. like conjure. Do, do proficiency bonuses automatically uh Yes, they automatically level up. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just gonna check just to oh wait, never mind, it already is. Oh fuck. Uh my charisma's already twenty. Oh that never mind. I'm like getting all excited. I'm like, oh, I can increase two stats. I'm like, oh no, I can't. Nope, not at your level. Yeah. Um. There is. So I I gotta apologize for this to you, Joe. Uh, there is something that you noticed when you were in that clearing. Uh, one of those bodies had on it a a set of armor, like a leather armor, that appeared to be in quite good condition. So I did forget to mention that. I do apologize. Oh, well then. Brush the dirt off my shoulders. Oh, wow. Oh. So if you want, I because it was my fault, I will let you retcon. And if you wanted to go investigate that, you can. I stand um, behind you. This is clearly a plant by the DM to screw me over. <laughs> of course! Oh, you've got me figured right out, Joe. All my tricks are useless. I'm gonna ignore it. Okay. So I got more spells from the Druid Circle that I have, like, but I still can't. Like, those aren't those aren't like cantrips, are they? Like, no, no, no. You gain those spells. Those become spells you have prepared automatically that do not count towards your spells total. Oh, okay, cool. As as much as I want that armor, let's go get it. No, I, I, I. What if I? What if I went to go get it for you? Yeah. Oh, Would that make you feel ahead. better? Okay. All right, I'll uh, yeah. walk out. I'll I'll walk out, keeping my eyes peeled for anything. Uh, can I ask Game to go into owl mode and just like watch the surroundings for me? Give right. me two hoots if something happens. Can do. I morph All into right. a beautiful owl. All right, All right, you morph into an owl, and then what do you do? You're I fly. Is I fly. Yeah, first I like I like spread my wings, and I'm like. Like kind of like owl flexing, and then right. and then I fly and I and I circle around and I keep an eye out. All right, I casually walk out to the bodies. I make an investigation with... check. Okay, uh, you walk up to which one? The one with the armor. Okay, make an investigation check. All right, and this I think is still a disadvantage because level one is what gives you disadvantage yep. in your ability checks. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um. As you as you look at the body, you notice that this person, their arm is kind of their hand is open, and it's just kind of extended out in the direction of a particular tree off actually towards the cliff where you guys came from. 
As you take a look around the body, you notice that there is a weapon strapped to the side. And the armor itself appears to be in pretty good condition. The skin of this individual is lost all its color at this point and is now a, a ghastly kind of gray. Yep, he is dead. I take him by the leg and start dragging him towards my companions. All right, so you, dra- as you start pulling on this body, kind of dragging it, leaving a, a bit of a trail in the dirt, you can see where the grass was kind of underneath him. It was uh, kind of pushed down flat and a bit of moisture had collected. The smell is not very pleasant. Uh, as you are pulling on the leg, you're kind of dragging him towards everybody? Uh, yeah. Okay. So as you're pulling on the leg, you're, you've kind of grabbed, got him by the boot. And as you, as you keep pulling him, your foot actually slips for a moment, and you tug on the boot, and the boot comes off. And an object f- hurls forth out of the boot and actually embeds itself in the tree right beside your head, Honos. And as you look to the side, well, you see a dagger. You. <laughs> you see a dagger stuck into the tree. It's still shaking slightly with the force of the impact. And you notice carved into the hilt of this dagger is the word lucky. Alright. Huh. Yeah, Alright. Uh, can I continue Dude. dragging him? Uh, you, you can continue dragging him, so you're, you're pulling him and you take a yeah. quick glance towards the other body and you see that it's lying there. It's in just normal clothing. This individual is not armored. They appear to be a little, little bit on the older side. Uh, they have uh, they have kind of like a cloth bag lays at their side, and they're clasping uh, a small, a small pouch or satchel, satchel in their uh, their left hand. Clearly, this, this dagger is not meant for me. All right, uh, do I finish dragging the body? Yes, you you drag it over to your friends. All right, then I turn around, head back towards the other body to grab the satchel out of his hand. All right, I, so as you as you get towards the other body, around. I want to look around really quick just to make sure that I'm looking around too. Make a perception check, uh, Stevo. Make an investigation check. Oh, is anyone else investigating these bodies, by the way, or is it just Morris? Well, he's the only um, one in the clearing. Yeah, I'm not... Well, he not he pulled the other body towards where you all are. It's now at the edge of this clearing, like a little bit concealed in the trees, and it's just laying at the feet of the rest of the party. I'll, I'll, pick, up the, I'll pick up the lucky dagger and take a look at the body that he brought us. All right, you grab the dagger and stow it amongst your things. It's very light and very well balanced. You can roll it around your fingers very easily. It's, it's a nice dagger. Uh, sorry, and then you are going to investigate the body at your feet? Yep. Roll an investigation check. I did so. Ah, oh, you did. Okay. So. Morris, roll a d6, and Honos, roll a d4. <coughs> Times that by 10, and you find that many gold pieces on your respective bodies. Ooh. Uh, yuck. So 50 gold? Yes. Yeah. Um, hey, I'm going to cast a spell. It's not anything. I'm just testing it to see if it works. Okay, Probably. what spell are you casting? I'm I'm not actually casting it. Oh, I see. You're just going to do your thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, Honos, you managed to peel the armor off of this creature. The, the body itself is very cold to the touch. And, I mean, you're not unfamiliar with the sensation of what a body feels like, but this is very cold. The armor you pull off of it, though, is functional studded leather armor. It seems to be about your size. This individual is fairly lean. Uh, and as you were removing it, you undid a belt to which a rapier is strapped. Wow. This guy has a treasure chest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna hang to the, hang the leather on a tree. I'm going to let that air out a bit. <laughs> as, you are, as you finish removing this... There is a piece of cloth that's kind of laid over top of the armor, 
that it just has a very simple large circle with an X that seems to protrude just past the perimeter of the circle in it. Say that again? Uh, so the over top of the armor, there is kind of a cloth uh, or essentially tabard. And it's got a great big, it, it's a very simple design. It's a brown design with kind of tan lines. And these lines draw a circle and then X crossing through the circle. But the points of the X extend a little bit past the perimeter of the circle. I don't suppose anybody recognizes this, do they? It is immediately apparent to Theon, Morris, and Mendardis that this is the symbol of the crossroads. In fact, Morris, or no, uh, sorry, not Morris, uh, Theon, make an intelligence check. Oh boy. This was on the armor, right? Oh, yeah. This was this was on a piece of cloth over top of the armor. Okay, I'll take that too. Okay. Oh no, that's a saving throw. Uh, Theon, you you know it's pretty commonplace for cell swords and hired guards to hang around the crossroads because it tends to be where more things that <clears throat> involve people needing protection tend to go. And it is not uncommon at all for individuals that are looking to protect themselves to hire somebody from the crossroads. Uh, I let them know that this could possibly be a place where somebody might be looking to hire random mercenaries and the like. And all that uh, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Morris, you rolled a 17 on your investigation. Okay. So, Morris, as you were looking around it's, the body... It's uh, 8. Oh, right, because you're your disadvantage. So okay. as you're looking around the body, you, see, you notice that clutched in the left hand is that kind of leather pouch slung over one shoulder and kind of resting at the side now is uh, a felt bag with just a series of kind of triangles across it. And the face of this this body is staring up into the sky in wide-eyed horror and its neck is crushed thin. So it is it is kind of distorted. The The head is a normal shape, but just below it where the throat is, is very, very tightly compressed, almost to being barely larger than the width of the spine itself. It's very unnerving. Hmm. And you can see signs of rot around where the flesh was kind of pulled taut and torn from whatever it is that happened to this thing. There we go. Mindardis is walking around and taking a look at this area. And Sorwin, you begin to notice this too. The grass and the land in this area is not perfectly even. There are disturbances in certain places. There are areas where the plant life has been disrupted, uprooted. And they're not, it's not in a large area. They're just, there's a whole series of small ones kind of scattered about. And one area of the clearing is actually devoid of any vegetation. It is just dark brown earth. It's in a kind of triangular shape. Hmm. All right, which direction is that? Um, from where you are, it's it's only about fifty feet from where the bodies are, but it's it's roughly in the center of the clearing. Uh, I swoop on down there and I, I check it out. Okay, make a perception check. Oh no, this would be investigation. Oops, okay. Uh, that's good. <laughs> oh yeah! So you and Mindardis are looking into this area and <clears throat> in your owl form you have this excellent vision. And as you land down and you're looking at this, you notice that there are animal tracks in this area. 
there are a series of paw prints. Some of them are large, some of them are very narrow and sleek. And um, well, I guess, uh, yeah, I'll have you make a nature check. Me? Yes, make a nature okay. check to try and determine what these uh, prints are. Uh, what you notice is there is there are paw prints of a wolf, but a rather large wolf, and there are paw prints that are consistent with dogs, but a really big dog. Which way are the paw prints heading? They are actually scattered all about this area, oh. and the the kind of a dry and dead patch. Some of the large dog prints are facing towards that area, and the triangle is kind of pointing with its tip towards where those paw, the four paw prints are all facing. And the, the furrows there are a little deeper, as if the, whatever caused them kind of dug into the earth a little bit. Hmm. Morris, what you notice as you are going going through this body and you are kind of taking some of the various things off of it you find within that leather pouch is a letter a small vial full of a kind of red brown liquid you find a few scattered herbs and leaves you find a dagger that's strapped to the side of this individual and then the, the kind of bag that's slung over their shoulder. When you pick it up, it's very light. And it doesn't even feel like there's anything in it. Can I look in it? Is that something I'm allowed to do? Sure. Actually, you, instead you... of looking in it right away, I'm going to take the stuff that I found, including the bag, and head back towards the party under the cover of the trees before I look in it. Okay. So you, you gather all the things that you've collected from this individual, and you head back towards your party. So, as you're doing this, as you as you gather up all these things, and you kind of lift the torso up in order to remove the bag from it. Something weird catches your attention. As you lift up the body, and you kind of take this out from underneath it, there's a weird trick of the light. Because when you when you pick it up, there's no there's nothing that's dark underneath this. Like all, all the shadows being cast in this area are very, very obvious because of the way the sunlight is hitting everything. But when you pick up this body, there's no shadow beneath it. Like okay. a vampire? Okay, we need to go. Alright. So I quickly take this stuff and then run back to the party. This all is right. too weird. Slightly unnerved by your discovery, you rapidly collect all the, uh, the belongings from this individual and you head back there. You notice that your druid friend in owl form and your elven companion appear to be taking inventory of something along the land within the center of this clearing. So Sorwin, we'll say that, uh, that you and Mandardis come back and you relay what it is that you found to the rest of your party as they have collected themselves at the edge of this clearing. This place is weird. Let's get the hell out of here. Hoot hoot. Hoot 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 hoot. Are you talking about the crossroads thing? Hoot hoot. No, but... the... No, no, I'm talking to HPG. What do you mean? Are, are, are you saying that they came back from the crossroads? The the tabard that this individual oh, is wearing okay. indicates yeah. that they come from the crossroads, yes. And Morris, you even recognize that symbol now from your time in the crossroads. I was at the crossroads once. I recognize that symbol from it. Who? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What was in my backpack, though? Uh, you found a a handwritten note. Uh, do you remember the items that I described to you? Yeah, I hand the dagger to. Well, I had the Konos? dagger. Oh, no, he he found a, he found a different dagger. He found a, a, a normal dagger. looking dagger. Yeah. 
A gold looking dagger? Normal. No, a normal looking dagger. Okay. So I have three da three daggers and one lucky dagger. Quote unquote. Yes. And the rapier and the armor. I'm I'm leaving the rapier. Okay, you're not taking the rapier. Are you taking the armor? Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna put it on yet. It's, it needs to air out a little more. All right. So, as a uh, as your elven companion and your druid friend return, well, simply an owl, who is hooting at you. Hoot, hoot, hoot. Mandardus, oh, Mandardus lets you know that the two of them have found a collection of <clears throat> strange tracks and markings all throughout this clearing. What you also noticed, Sorwin, as you were doing this, was uh, scattered amongst all of these animal prints were two humanoid prints, boot prints, that appeared to be in flight. So in every situation, these, these boots were running away. And only closer towards the body did, at one point, the armored figure turn to face whatever it is was chasing him. At least this is the information you can discern based on what you find. Uh, I'm going to reiterate, we need to leave and get the hell away from this place. Let's continue towards the, the Otum area. That's where we were going now. Yeah. Wait, wh what do you think, Honos? Yeah. yeah, let's go. Let's, okay. let's go and go there fast. So, we so can just, with just the, create space this place. between this place. Okay. Yeah. Yep. We head off. See the wizard. Everyone make a perception check. Oh, no. <sighs> Yay. <laughs> we see happening? more objects. Have you rolled a perception check higher than that? Yeah. Everybody yeah, he rolled know. he rolled a good perception check before. Did I? Yeah, you got like an eighteen a little while ago when that, uh that when was you were trying to look at what Hosk No no when you were trying to look at what Hosk was, was doing, oh. that was your good perception roll. Yeah, eighteen. What the hell? Do I see more things coming in the distance? <laughs> <laughs> Million. <laughs> Uh, Morris, as the group of you are beginning to kind of turn tail and leave, you catch a small blur of motion out of the corner of your eye. So you are not surprised. However, Sorwin, Honos, Theon, Mindardis, and Hosk, you have to wait for the surprise round to finish. I'm, I want this to be known that I am in flight away from these goofballs. Alright, so what do I notice? What is that? Behind you. We're all about to die. <laughs> you oh, it doesn't look that scary. Looks like a banshee. Or a ghoul. Or like All right, Hosk was creature. over here. Okay, so Honos, you were checking out one of the bodies, so you would have been relatively close. Mindardis and Sorwin were coming back, so we'll say you two were over here. Okay, so Theon, what was go what were you doing while all this was going on? You had to be close enough to have seen the armor, but that that could have happened from pretty much anywhere. Uh I was I never went into the big clearing. I was with uh Oh, so you would have been like hanging Mindardus back where Hosk looking where the uh the crossroads symbol was. Well, Mindardus was in the center of the clearing investigating uh with Sorwin. The the, the crossroads no. symbol was with the armor that Honos found. And he oh, had hung up and, on a tree. And that's what you made me investigate for? I, I thought you said you, we looked at the ground and we saw a spot and you told me to roll an investigation for it. 
Uh, well, I, to be perfectly honest, I don't recall what it is that you were looking at. Did you say what you were investigating? Was it just the armor or the tabard? You or? told me and Sorwin to do an investigation check. That, was that may have... That, okay, that was on the armor? Alright, so I, I think it was just to, to notice the symbol, so well, I don't I've, think there's anything I've else. Been, like, I, I wasn't in the clearing. I guess I was back by Hosk. Okay, so you would have been further back, closer to here. Okay. All right. Everybody got a roll initiative. Click. Oh, thank God. Ooh, good initiative rolls. Oh. Never roll good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Jesus, Hosk. Yeah, you, you got a really nice initiative roll. All right. However, it is a surprise round, so Hosk does not get his turn. So there is kind of a, an exhalation and kind of a, a raspy as this gray, cold corpse begins to suddenly animate and peel itself off, off the ground. But the, the movement itself has this strange fluidity to it that's very, very unnatural. And as it kind of turns its head and kind of lulls forward and fixes its eyes in front of it, you can still see the, the wounds that were in the body. They were large gashes taken out of the neck, kind of raked across. But it doesn't stop this kind of breathy rasp from emanating from what this creature is. And it lunges forward and begins stumbling in the direction of Morris and Honos. This is what we get when we don't leave the creepy place right away. <laughs> All right, and it lashes out with one hand at each of you. We can uh, see so the that rules, is, by the way. Oh, for this one? Yeah. Okay, well, that is a 12 and an 8 versus AC. So the 12 for Morris, the 8 for Honos. That's a negative. Nope, nope, nope. All right. Thank you for letting me know you could see that. All right, so this creature lashes out with both hands and managing to not connect with either of you as it's got this, this lumbering gait where it just shifts all its weight in this desperate attempt to throw itself forward at whatever it is that it's seen that has caught its attention. Sorwin, you're up. Or no, uh, hang on. You're surprised. They unsurprised. Tono's surprised. Vendarda surprised. Morris, you're the only one that wa was not surprised, so it's your turn now. All right, I walk up to it. You walk up to it? Uh... It has been stripped of its armor, so its armor class is down. Okay. I guess I will... Uh, reckless attack twice. Okay, make your two reckless attacks. So your first attack, you swing, and this creature manages to just swerve and duck. You can hear the, the pop and snap of joints as they move in this hurried fashion. It's very, very creepy. The second swipe, you come backwards horizontally, in, basically in just the exact opposite arc. You actually use the momentum to come back the other way. This time you do catch it glancing across its shoulder, cleaving upwards. And you take off a slice of shoulder muscle and a chunk of ear, and this creature doesn't flinch. It doesn't even seem to respond to the fact that it just got hit. Okay. Uh, in that case, bonus action, I'm going to rage. Okay, and you rage. Cast it so we know I did it. All right. Okay, it is now Hosk's turn. He is going to spend his full movement 
to get into melee attack range. But that is all he can do. <coughs> all right, it is now the, the creature's turn. It's gaze still fixated forward on you, this jaw elongated, sinking down. As all seemingly a, a great degree of slackness in the jaw muscles just allows the the mandible, the jawbone, to sink low. And you can see these black teeth that just reside within the maw of this unnaturally pale flesh. And it lashes out again. He gets advantage on me. He does get advantage on you. Oh, uh, just give me one quick second here to check something out. All right, that is a 12 and a 13 versus AC. Which I think both miss. I'm pretty sure he is at least a 15. Yeah, I think so. So he lashes out with these two claws, and they, they just manage to catch nothing but the fur and the, the cloth that he wears. Seemingly no effect taken. Sorwin, behind you, you hear a similar empty, hollow rasp. As the second body that had been looted but not moved begins to sit upright with sudden speed and pull itself up to its feet, turning around and fixing its eyes on you and Medardus, its two closest targets. All right. It is your turn, Sorwin. I thought he was uh, flying as an owl. What? Yeah. Wait, were you, so you were up in the air? Yeah, I was still, still an owl. owl, yeah. I know you were still an owl, but I don't know if you're in the air or you're on the ground. You're just, I, mean, I, don't, you're I don't think I'd be, like, walking. I mean, I thought I would be... I, I figured I'd be flying around. Okay, all right, so you're in the air. So you, you see this creature fix its gaze on Mindardus. Uh... I I go land and then I change into a black bear, which is that I think, yeah. I change into a black bear. Uh I don't know what c this conjure animals is though. Hold on. I, I didn't the uh I wanna do this too. I wanna make a bunch of animals. Uh, okay, so what, uh, do, what, what animals they, do you... Uh, more black bears. I would like to make four more black bears. So I'm a black bear, and then I have four more. So you, you become a black bear. Yeah. Well, okay, I think to cast a spell, you cannot cast it within animal form. Okay, so you, would so have I, to, you have to drop animal form and then cast it, but dropping the form, I think, is a bonus action. So you... You can you can change forms the this once because that uses your bonus action and then you can use your action to cast the spell. If okay, you want to so morph into a black land, bear, you have to do it next turn. Okay, cool. Okay, I land like further away. I land like uh, so it, it's over here. So I want to like swoop down and land. I don't know up here ish. <laughs> okay, move your uh, your character over there. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then I want to make a bunch of little black bear babies, and I want to uh, sick my black bear babies uh, next round, I guess. Okay, so where do you summon your bears? Uh, just in front of me, in a little, like, bear arc. There's a little bear army here. There's four of them now. Oh, <laughs> shit. Give me little black bears. Yes, bear army. All right, so you have a mighty collection of bears now. Yep. <laughs> uh, now, do they roll initiative on their own, I think? Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know. Let me find Let's... black bear stat. Roll initiative for the creatures as a group. God, sure. 
Yeah, they have, so I'm they have I'm gonna. Turn. Okay, they do have their own turn. All right, let me find the Black Bear stats. Uh, I I, cl- I linked Black Bear stats too. Oh, you did? Oh, you're uh, right. You did. Maybe okay. they link more of that though. Hold on. Uh, okay, so their their dex bonus is zero, which means their initiative bonus is zero. Uh, and they roll a sixteen. Uh, Black bear. You're not on Steam, are you? Uh, it, never mind. I'll just do it through here. There's my Black bear. I'll let it be known that I've named my black bears from left to right. It's uh, Moby, Dopey, Smopey, and Popey. Smopey. <laughs> Moby, Dopey, Smopey, Popey. I totally thought it was going to be like weed names. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sativa, Indica, Cannabid, Benoid, and... Uh, THC. And Too Much Weed. His, his guy's name is just Too Much Weed. All right. It's very long. It's very like Mary Jane or something. No, they're all male. Tender love and weed. <laughs> all right, so they're no, all male. They're all male. <laughs> <laughs> These are pissed off male bears. So your your owl companion swoops down, lands, and uh, you know what? No, it doesn't even land. In midair, kind of twists itself around and shifts form. And landing on its two feet, skidding to a stop, is your druid friend, Sorwin, who whirls his hands around and mutters an incantation, kind of reaching forward with both arms, and out of the earth itself, burst forward, almost like giant burrowing creature. Four black bears lurch themselves forward out of the ground and kind of shake themselves out from the dirt, fixing themselves forward. All right, so that ends your turn, because that's your bonus, that's your movement, and that's your action. I feel very safe. Hey, HPG. all right. What up? Uh, I think I stopped listening. Did the attacks land on me from the they did not. creature? They nope. did not. Okay. They did not land on you. Stay on. You're up. Okay. Uh, you you got my message in a Discord, by the way. Uh, I will check. I'm just check, telling you that I changed the cantrip. The one that I said I was gonna. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. So you can do so booming blade you can do as a sorcerer? Yeah. Cool. I just have to be in like melee range and stuff, so No worries, mine. Yeah. It is your turn, Theon. I understand that. And now I can't really cast anything through the giant bear army. The bear wall? The <laughs> wall of bear the wall. Bear wall. The... Okay, so <laughs> I mean you can you can I, try and I... move around the bear wall, mighty though it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's not it's not an endless bear wall. I mean, I mean, there's barely four of them. Yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which is which is definitely what I'm gonna do. But uh, legendary uh, artifact wall of infinite bears. <laughs> okay. Sweet. So it's a level twenty item. Right now, it's pretty forbearing. <laughs> Uh, uh, stop it! Uh, stop uh, it! You are not Scanlan. You are not earning experience for these. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> throw that out there. I moved there. I hate how I have to go and click something out. That that was right. Correct, right? Yep. I think so. Uh, and. Because fucking Mo is always right the fuck next to the dude. If you want me to back up so we can attack you, I can. Uh, no, I'm, I'm should have put on the armor. I'm feeling bare naked right now. Stop, Stop it! it. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> what? Are you, uh, how is it that you two are in an argument right now? I don't even understand this. Who? What are you telling each other to stop? Oh Joe. no, we were I'm telling Joe. We were like, "Stop it!" <laughs> oh, <laughs> for the for because yeah, he he did another bear pun. Anyway, oh, I cast. I uh, cast. <laughs> you cast, cast firebolt right here. You cast firebolt on that guy. <laughs> All right, make your attack roll against that guy. I did. Okay then. All right, so you open up your palm, and a similar or a, a familiar conjuration of 
colorful energy bursts forward, these red, orange, yellow bolt of energy just leaping forward out of your hand, slamming into the chest of this creature as it reels back and <laughs> takes three fire damage. Take that! <laughs> it took three damage. You know, it's three damage. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's okay, you know. You can do better, but it's not bad. All right, so that's your movement, that's your action. Is that it? Um, most definitely. I'm going to do my thing. You're going to do your thing? What you going to do? I'm going to move forward, stab, and then move back. All right, do your thing. It's what he's going to do until they come for you. Uh, he is dagger, being flanked, dagger. so I will give you advantage on the attack. But it still doesn't hit. Ooh. Like two fives and a six. That's that's a nice sneak attack roll. Hobam. Okay. Uh so you crit it on the first one, which means you double the damage, so you did nine damage for the dagger. And you would also double the damage for the sneak attack. Yeah. Uh go ahead and roll another three D six, please. I would like to point out that I did three damage. You did do three damage with your cantrip that cost you nothing. <laughs> 28 plus 9 is 37. All right, so how would you like to destri- describe how you pretty much destroyed this creature? An invisible creature. <laughs> I am... I'm just gonna sink, sink my blade into its uh, leg and sever it. All right, so Honos drives the dagger forward into its leg, and the the angle that he he penetrates at, and the force with which he manages to dig this weapon in, it hits a very narrow neck on the femur, right where it meets the hip, and just sends a fissure through the bone, through the the kind of weakened, decomposing bone, and the force of his arm just pushes the leg and actually just disconnects it free of the body as it falls down, landing on its back, snarling and snapping with its jaws. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick it in its face for good measure. It rears back and clocks it across the face with his boot and the last kind of <laughs> escapes it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move back and uh, daintily wipe my dagger off. And try not to throw up. All right, that ends Honos's turn. It's the turn of Sorwin's bears. By the way, could he technically, like, conjure, uh, well, triceratopses in uh, critical roles uh, sense? Could um, there be I, I mean, I just, I just go out of the book. I would say a triceratops is a pretty high challenge yeah, rating yeah, animal, but, and yeah. that's beyond. And also, it's I can only do half right now. Or I mean, I could do any actually, but. I, I mean, I'm just assuming we're using just the the five e book. Yeah. Animals. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, like any supplemental things, I'll allow, but I'd have to like look at what it is you're summoning first. Uh, yeah. A ty- a Tyrannosaurus Rex is actually a five uh, e beast. Well, yeah, well, I the think book doesn't it have any challenge rating to animals at all, so I don't even understand yeah. what that. Uh, I think that would be listed under dinosaurs. Isn't there a section for dinosaurs in this book? I really? have to, let's go. On. I don't know. I mean, that'd be cool. I am interested in summoning a challenge rating animal or two. Yeah, there's dinosaurs in the monster manual. What? Oh, yeah, an allosaurus is challenge rating two. An ankylosaurus is three. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, this uh, is going to be really exciting. Is challenge rating eight. So no, you don't, you can't summon that. Oh. And a uh, triceratops is five. What what page is that on? It's in the monster manual. Uh, It's on page 81. I don't have the monster manual. Um, Okay, so my bears can't reach this other uh, dude down here, so I'm just going to send them... Yeah, they can form a wall in front of uh, uh, our archer. All right, you you order the bears to form the great wall of bear in front of your your archer. (laughs) Yeah. For my archer friends. Okay, Sorry. how far can they get? Uh, 40 feet. 
they have 40 feet move. Uh, where is that climb? Permit, speed 40 feet, climb 30. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. They can move 40 feet. Uh, so, I, no, I have to move them. Okay. So you wanted a wall of bear like this? Yeah, that's like something like So that is your wall of bear? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, well, maybe a little bit tighter, you know, but that's okay. They're, they're like... They're like little high bears, anyways. They're they're kind of confused. <laughs> All right, so they form the great wall of bear, and then just so that's their movement. So what are you going to do for their action? Well, I can't I can't do anything with I, I can't reach them. Can I, I, but they can hold their action. Actually, wait. Yeah. I think it's that. Okay, let me let me look at this. They can roar loudly. It has its own turns. They obey any verbal commands that you issue to them. No action required by you. If you don't issue any commands to them, they defend themselves from hostile creatures, but otherwise take no actions. Okay, so unless you explicitly tell them to do something, they're just going to stay there and defend themselves. Uh, yeah, I say protect us. There is a, a simultaneous grunt from all four bears as they seem to understand your verbal command. Yeah. So, Mindardis takes out his short bow and notches a regular arrow, loosing it at his target. Okay, the arrow connects straight into the center of mass of this creature, pierce where it, where it normally would be the heart of this creature, which has this very ghastly look to itself, because it has this thin, crushed neck that is somehow supporting a regular-sized head, which, as, it, as the head leans to the side, you can hear the pop of bone as the, the remaining spine is struggling to maintain the upright posture of the head. Morris, it's your turn. Uh, there's only one guy left, right? That's all you can see, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll move up behind the bear wall. Right here. <laughs> right? Uh, and, you can, yeah, you can move up to the bear wall. And I'll stop here. And end my turn. You're going to end Same your turn thing. or hold your turn? End my turn. Uh, wait, I can hold it? Go. You can hold an action. Oh, uh, how long can I hold the action for? Uh, until the trigger you specify, or you can just say, I'm going to use my held action now. Well, right. What does well, that mean? I'll, uh, so, that as case... a hold action, what you can do is, if you hold, it's anything you can do on an action, you can do with the hold when you specify a target. So you can say, I'm going to hold my attack until somebody walks in the door. Or I'm going to hold this spell, which means you you expend the spell and you like have it ready, and then when your trigger occurs or when you say so, you release the spell and it happens. It, no matter whose turn it is. No matter whose turn it is, okay. if you use the hold action, you cannot hold bonus actions, and you cannot hold movement. Cool. All right. Uh, so I do have a question about how something works. Then. Okay. So. So I'm thinking I'm moving right here, and then I want to hold my action until, or in case this thing gets close to me. Uh, so like if it moves here or here or something. Uh, if I were to hold and then use it then, would my rage go away? Or would it only go away then my next turn if I don't attack or get attack attacked? Uh, let's, I'm just going to take a quick look at rage again. You haven't raged yet this fight, correct? He did. He did? Okay. Just trying to find the uh, casting of it. He did it right after. Oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's verbatim in my rage description. Uh, all right, let me grab uh, my, my... So I can, I can just read it. I have it okay. open. Uh, 
Your rage lasts for one minute and ends early if you are knocked unconscious or if your turn ends and you haven't attacked a hostile creature since your last turn or taken damage since then. So yes, if you stood there and held your action, and unless you make an attack somehow, you will lose your turn. rage at the All start right, so, of the next so, turn. So if I hold my action uh, and I attack before the start of my next turn, I still have rage? Yes. Okay, then I'll hold my action and wait. Okay, you hold your action. What are you waiting for? What's your trigger? Uh, for for the Ugly to get in range. All right. If he gets in range. Okay. So it is now Hosk's turn. He taking a look at the situation and seeing that everybody seems to have things pretty much under control. He's actually going to back up and start heading north with the understanding that this is not going to take much longer. All right. It is now the creature's turn. And it's going to run straight at the closest thing that it can. And it is going to attack you, Morris. Sweet. So, uh, if... I guess I don't know if I should have specified, but if he came into attack range, I was going to reckless attack. Uh, does it affect... Well, I'm going to I'm going to consider it that as soon as he came into range, you launched your attack. So you're going to make your attack roll now. But okay. the nature of reckless attack is such that you commit so heavily to the attack that anything coming at you has advantage. Right, right. So so I'm technically attacking first. So well, you're, saying, you're simultaneously saying, attacking. Now, your yeah. armor class is 15, right? Yeah. I'm planning okay. to reckless attack, so assume I'm at disadvantage. Well, I guess if he attacks first, uh, I'm I considering it simultaneous, so he's he gets his advantage on you, but it, it wouldn't yeah. matter otherwise. All right, give him advantage because I'm reckless attacking. Oh, I did already. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's 15 for AC. All right, so uh, you can make your attack. By the way, this creature as it lunges forward, it rakes its claw across your chest uh, in, in a very similar fashion to how you were hit yesterday. Uh, by that large bear creature, but it that creature was huge. This creature is is smaller than you, so the claw is much much smaller. But there is a burn that follows behind it. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Shit. So as this burn begins to spread further and further into your chest, you can feel the seizing up of your muscles, and you you actually can't even breathe right now because your chest has just gotten so tight, and you are frozen. You are considered paralyzed. Okay. Uh, what damage did I take from a slashing? Uh, you took six slashing damage, Half. and then... Yeah, so six slashing damage, and then the creature reaches forward and clamps its blackened teeth down on your arm, its head kind of whipping forward on this small tendril of a spine, and it sinks these disgusting blackened teeth into your arm, and you take an additional six piercing damage. All righty. That is the end of this creature's turn. Uh, so he took 12 in total, which has been halved to 6. Okay. But the, the rest of you, you see Morris just begin to seize up. 
and stop moving. Uh, Sorwin, it's your turn. Did I get my attacks off before you did that? or? Oh, um, y- did you make your attacks? I rolled twice yes, before the constitution. Okay. All right, so... And you did reckless, so you gained advantage. Okay, so they've both connected. So as you are, as this creature scratches across you and you can feel that tightening up of your muscles, you use the last of what strength you have and, and movement you've got to deliver two mighty horizontal blows across the, the side of this creature. You leave these large gashes and you, you expose like rib cage, you expose bone, but this creature is not dissuaded even after having taken such a severe, uh, severe bit of damage. Oh. Okay. You're up, Sorwin. Uh, can I command my bears to attack or to wait for their turn? I can send them in, right? Uh, they roll. They have their own initiative, so they're going to move at whatever time they decide to move. Or, or their, their turn, the initiative. Okay. Uh, well, then I just uh, I sit down on the grass and I smoke a doobie. Because it'll be over soon. I don't do anything. All yeah, right, yeah. so... Wait, wait, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if it's too late. I go loot this guy. Okay. <laughs> um, well, we already that, that, that was the body that had the armor oh, it's already been off looted? of it and oh. a lot of things. So it, it's all basically, aside from like a, a little like loincloth that's got on, is buck-ass nude. Uh, there's no, perhaps, magical things on it because it became magical again? Uh, make an investigation check. Or no, you're looking for something magical, make an arcana check. Seems like it might be magical. Arcana. Luckily, I got plus three to arcana. Are you? Ah, okay. There is an element of magic that animates the corpse itself, but as far as any means of harnessing that or collecting something from it, you you do not know. Uh, okay. Then so I some kind of energy, some kind of magic, like has given motion and purpose to this form again, but it's whatever was there has been dispelled and is is fading away. All right, then I take its loincloth. All right, you leave it nude. The It's gray gonads exposed to the sun. It is an unpleasant sight at best. The <laughs> loincloth smells awful. As a result of being on a creature that died, what generally happens when the you know a, a corpse dies, it loses all muscle control and relaxes, so the loincloth is saturated in feces and urine. That has been left outside for an indeterminate period of time. You now have a soiled loincloth you can add to your inventory. It smells awful. I'll add it right now. One soiled loincloth. Uh, Make a constitution saving throw. (laughs) Me? Okay. Yep. Yep, Make a constitution saving throw. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Constitution, does it click the, the check mark? Uh, it should be yeah. the heart, I think. The heart, the heart. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the heart's the same throw. Okay, you, um, your stomach lurches a little bit as you put it into your pack, but you manage to, to keep whatever you had for breakfast down. It is now yes. a poop pack. Poop pack. Poop poop platter. Doo doo duffel. This reminds me of Swift Panda with his uh, ogre dick. I think that this just smells like fertilization. I'm going to use this to, when I plant Feces my plants family. later. <laughs> my, it's going to encourage bacteria to form and help the soil. Crap cargo. Crap cargo. Okay, so that is uh, that is going to be your turn, <laughs> unless you're going to do anything else. No, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what yeah. I have the, the bears for. Shit satchel. 
All right. I can do these all day. <laughs> Sorwin, you're up. Or, sorry, Theon, you're up. Theon. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, how big is this rock right here? <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, which rock? The, the one you're rock. closest to? Yeah, to the left of me, right there. Uh, it's about uh, total, like the total diameter, maybe ten feet. Tall, so tall, fairly tall. large. Oh, how tall is it? Um, yeah. about five and a half, six feet. It's a fairly big uh, rock. Is it? Does it look easy to climb? Uh, if you, you can attempt to climb it. I would like to attempt to climb it and perhaps look at my surroundings and see if there's any other bad guys coming around. Make an athletics check and then a perception check. <laughs> God damn it, man! More grass coming our way, guys. <laughs> should we make it up there? So, so Theon, <sighs> so you you get you get up to the rock and you go ahead and start grabbing uh, you know, whatever faces you can, start pulling yourself up, and you make some pretty good progress. Uh, and then your your hand kind of grips a portion that's still slick with some of the morning dew, and your hand slips and you take a tumble and land on your back. It wasn't a very big fall, so you don't take any damage, but you are staring up at the sky. Yay, I'm prone. Hey, guys, I see clouds, though. You see clouds. You <laughs> certainly see some clouds. I don't believe them on principle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, uh, and I, uh, would you say I've utilized all my movement? <laughs> um, can I'm, I stand back up? I'm going to say you can stand back up. <laughs> okay, I stand back up, and that's my turn. <laughs> Whew, that's a tough rock. Uh, that was rough. That was a rough turn. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take a look around and see if there are any more bad guys around. Make a perception check. You see clouds. <laughs> distracted by the you, you, are, you are distracted by uh, your your elven companion. Hey, hey, the... Honos, do you see those <laughs> clouds too? <laughs> <laughs> perception oh, checks are not with us today at all. <laughs> no, the the perception is definitely not on your side. <laughs> My next ability increase will be giving me an advantage to fucking perception. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Why didn't I go That's downstairs to get my dice? <laughs> You're not going to go loot the ghoul? No. <laughs> There's a poop cloth. <laughs> Uh, Theon, make another perception check. What? Does one of the clouds look like a bad guy? <laughs> Just make a perception <laughs> check. I did. Shit. All right. So you are you are attempting to to fulfill your initial purpose, which was to to try and check the surroundings for bad guys. And as you're about to peer over the edge of the rock, a a sudden thud hits you in the back of the head, and it's, man, that shit smarts. You take one point of bludgeoning damage as the handle of a dagger impacts the back of your head. <laughs> what? I don't know, man. Could have came from anywhere. Crazy, <laughs> crazy place. Bears, you're up. The bears. Okay, so I have to link this. Okay, so I do four d six plus two and four and four two d four plus two. For damage on these guys. Hang on. We have to roll to hit first. I have to roll what? To you hit. have to roll to hit first. That's the, that's the d20. Uh, that's the d20 plus their proficiency plus their I'm assuming strength modifier. The d20 plus four. Doop. Roll. Come on, big bear, big bear. That's good enough. 
Big B's hand. Okay. Four. E six. Oh, uh, devastating. I'm going to take a leak. I'll be right back. So that's that's collectively all the damage. They, wow, four fives. I'll be right back as well. Yeah. I don't know if that's... No, no, it oh, it's supposed to be four, plus two. Be yeah. For all of them. So it should be plus eight in total. Yeah. So that's... So that's rolled one attack. 20. Yeah, I think I did. Oh, yeah. So you, you've got to roll three more d20s. But you've already rolled the damage, so it's fine. Oh, okay. Why don't you throw a dagger at me anyway? Oh, whoa, whoa I God. A dagger at you? That does not count. I rolled yes, you four did. Of them. No, I can see it in chat. No, we we can just take. So we'll drop oh, the first yeah, one. Right, we'll yeah. eleven. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it was what a thirteen, a sixteen, and a thirteen, and all of them were plus four. Uh, plus it, it doesn't four? matter. They all hit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you do. Uh, so seven times four. So you do thirty-two. Did you do the math there, right? For I have to do. I they get to multi-attack, so it doesn't fall and bite. Okay, you you fucking eviscerate this thing. How do you want to okay. do this? Wait, I want to roll my. I want to roll my. I'm also gonna take a leak right now, so I'll be right back. <laughs> it's too bad I'm not talking as Theon. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's great. This is great. I love this ability. <laughs> And here I am, searching through spells and shit to pick something to help the party. And then I get hit by a fucking dagger. There. <laughs> yeah, I know, I still haven't, I still haven't picked uh, one of my spells. Pick it right now. I'm leveling up. When we level up, do you get another ability point? Um, or is that only certain like levels. certain levels? Okay. And you don't uh, so also. What are all the 84 you're rolling? Uh, well, it's a multi attack, so that's the. That's the. I, I rolled bite, which was a hit for oh, 20. Oh, right, right, right. So that's all the extra damage. Yeah. Well, that yeah. Okay. spell's really good. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Draconic. What did you say? Oh no, I was, it, it, it's fine. I'm back. He's trying to figure out where that damage came from. No, I'm not trying to figure out where the damage <laughs> came from. I know where it came from. <laughs> I still want to know why your character whipped a dagger at me after you failed the perception check. So that ends the turns for the bears. Right. Okay, the bear's turns are done. So it is Mindardus' turn. You still have movement for those guys if you wanted to move them, by the way. Oh, no, they're good. Yeah. Or did you just, like, surround that ghoul when you fucking destroyed it? Yeah, it just, it just was all mauled. It was just a and... dog pile of bears. Yeah. A bear yeah. pile. A bear pile. It was unbearable. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Yeah, enough of that. <laughs> Theon, it's around this time that you hear a, a what it sounds kind of like heavy breathing, but there is there's more to it than that. There's just this kind of chaotic. Uh, babbling almost. I'm just gonna point out that you said I perceived something. Yes, you. It's <laughs> you. You perceive just it now. Checking. You perceive it now because the sound is approaching rapidly, and it is closer than you're feeling comfortable with, given that this kind of <laughs> sound is coming closer and closer. Um. I, uh, because I still can't hit the guy down there, um, do I know where it's coming from? Uh, it is coming from this direction. 
And your question is immediately answered because a large humanoid figure leaps up onto the rock. The pale green skin of this creature is revealing a form with elongated arms and just this this heavy kind of forward set posture, a hunched spine, and this grotesque head with a large bulbous protruding nose and these row upon row of sharp interlocking teeth in this jaw that's just kind of gnashing back and forth, making this frantic (laughs) sound. Uh, Do I know what this is? Uh, Make an arcana check. An arcana check? Sorwin, make a nature check. Dude, I I really need to, like, run down to my car or something and get my dice. (laughs) Because I have no... A series of very unfortunate rolls. Yeah. I'm going to name my guy Lemony. So, thankfully it's not a terribly difficult creature to identify. And Theon, you and Sorwin both pointed at the same time, and the two of you say in synchronization, Troll! Troll. It's a troll! It's a troll! <laughs> Has uh, has he noticed me yet, or is me? Uh... It's it's just looking everywhere right now. It's surveying the situation from its elevated point on the rock, and you can see this this long tongue is just kind of slavering back and forth in the mouth. It's kind of hanging wild to the side, and there is saliva dripping off of it onto the rock itself. I can see it just fine, though. Like it's like plain as day. Like if he were to look at me, he could see. It... It. It is plain as day to everybody. Okay. Um, cool. You are not immediately obvious because you are mostly behind that rock, but it does notice you. You can hear a, a heavy kind of huffing or breathing, and you figure it's probably smelling for things as well. Gotcha. All right. So that... Yeah, it took double movement to get up there. Okay, so that is the end of that turn. It is Mindardus' turn, and him seeing this brand new threat, and given that the previous threat is now a sh- a series of pieces of decaying flesh within the mouths of bears. Is he dead dead, or is he still alive? Uh, the no. thing that was just shredded by bears. Do the bears <laughs> have to take a constitution check? Uh, they were... No, they don't. (laughs) I'm just saying, they ate it. (laughs) No, they didn't eat it. Uh, That's true. I I meant more than They're fey anyways. Exactly, they're they're fey, so... I think they're (laughs) immune to disease. All right, so... Don't worry, they'll be all fey. (laughs) <laughs> DM so, yeah. Mindardus, Dar- Mindardus draws his bow and in a, a motion that is familiar to all of you now draws back nothing on the drawstring and yet what coalesces is a gray blue bolt of force and he unleashes it it slams into the chest of this troll just underneath the neck And it rolls a one. The troll oh. itself is caught underneath the jaw by this force, and you can hear it call out with a clock as it actually tumbles backwards off the rock. And but a moment later, there is a heavy thud as this creature lands on its back, uh, taking an additional that much. All right, and that is Mindardus' turn. He's going to stay where he is. Actually, he'll have to get closer for that shot. Let's see. He was there. There's a troll in the dungeon. Thought you ought to know. I'm getting some water. Cool story. (laughs) 
Is there a button anywhere in uh, our character sheets that say long rest? And no. we click it and no? No. That would be handy. And it just automatically resets all things. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Hi, back. Sorry about that. Okay, that was Mindardus' turn. Morris, it is your turn. All right. So everyone's dead except the troll in the dungeon? Yes. There you see no other threats. Okay. Well, uh, I guess I can bring... Uh, you can sprint and you can, yeah, make it to that distance. Oh, I forgot. This guy is on his back. He was knocked on his ass. And he hurt his back. Okay, there it is. <laughs> he hurt his back. All right. Uh, I don't think I can do anything else. Nope. So I'll end my turn. Wait. Hold on. Can I take that back? What are you going to do? Uh, I'll end my turn. All right. So does that mean my rage is over, or only if I don't get attacked this round? When you start your next turn, if you have not been attacked or made an attack, your rage ends. Okay, so I'm good for now. You are good for now. Good for now. You could have attacked one of Sorwin's bears. But then I couldn't have run this far. Yeah, that's true. Hello? You guys hear me? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Hmm. Huh. Okay, it is Hosk's turn now. And Hosk is going to spend his movement climbing up on top of this rock. And he's just going to wait there. Hosk. Those guys are out of the rotation now. Sorwin, you're up. Uh, all right. I am going to... I'm going to use, let me just make sure which spell this is. Action. I'm just going to link it so I can read it better. Uh, maybe tell us if it radius 100 feet directly above you. Ten feet, I don't know, like, I don't understand that this strikes down in, like, a small area, or, like... No, so what happens is you the spell summons a cloud, yeah, and that cloud exists at uh, the cloud itself is ten feet thick, like vertically ten feet, and has a sixty foot radius. Huh. And it's on a point a hundred feet above where you have chosen. So, like, say you target the troll, then a hundred feet yeah. above the troll, a ten foot tall, sixty foot radius cloud appears. Nice. Yeah, I do that. Uh, now is Conjure Animals, is that a concentration spell? Oh, good question. I believe so. Because right. if, you, if you call your lightning, that's also a concentration, so your bears will disappear. Okay, hang on. Then I may, don't, I may not want to do that. Conjure Animals, it's a... I don't know if it's... I'm just going to link it again. I don't... I don't think it's concentration. I don't think it's concentration. Yeah. I think it just is. Conjure animals is concentration. 
concentration up to an hour. Oh, okay. Okay, right. so if you right. if you cast Call Lightning, you will lose your bears. Okay, you can I still do not. it. No, I do not want to do that. Um, uh, hold on, let me just. So where's Morris at? Uh, Morris is right Morris here. There. Okay, I'm going to. I assume he's going right for the troll, so I'm going to put a resistance on him. Get him all buffed. And that's... What's, uh, Morris, what's your armor? Can I know what his armor is? My armor is pretty beefy. It's about three fourths of the way to awesome. Okay. Nah. Uh, huh. I don't really do very much. I uh, I wait for my bears to to mal these things down. Oh no! I cast haste. Is that is that cause that's not concentration? Is it? it is Jesus Christ! Everything's concentration. Okay, I wait. Uh, all of your cantrips would not be concentration, so you could cast any cantrips you wanted. Or you could look at uh, your level 1 spells and see if there's any non-concentration spells there you could cast. You can also hold your action to hold casting a spell. Oh, that's right. Um... Don't forget to order your bears. Yes, oh, and you, have, you can also issue a verbal order, because your bears are only going to do what you tell them to. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So I you have to explicitly to order yeah. them to do stuff. Okay, then I order them to certainly attack... Uh when they can, to start moving towards this giant thing. Okay. Um, and I, uh, I guess I'll just cast... Yeah. I, I think we're all good. I'm just going to wait. I order the bears to attack and I wait. All right. Concentration. Certain, hmm. By certainly, do you mean barely? Barely? As in barely. <laughs> Barely? No. Look, I'm running out of ways to do new puns. <laughs> okay, he's getting in the appropriate... What's going to scrape the back of the honeycomb here. <laughs> I can feel it. He's running low, guys. We're going to be okay. <laughs> Okay, so you've uh, commanded your bears, and you've ended your turn otherwise? Uh, uh, yeah, everything else is a concentration, so yeah, I can't, I, I can't do anything. So okay. do you guys find it embarrassing when your bears hold you back? You're not going to move? I'm uh, really glad you guys are bearing with me. <laughs> See, I don't know if it counts as a new pun if you're just using the same pun in a different <laughs> sentence. I'm using it for different words, that counts as a new pun. But it's the same word. You're you're always just replacing the word bear with the word that's bear. It's, that's because they're bears. Well, yeah, but I'm saying it doesn't count as a new pun, given it that it's the same that... usage in a different sentence. No, it's a different if I tell the same, the same joke, right, guys, like, it's, it's unbearable. Guys, this Somebody conversation, Craig, game unbearable. game, you beat me to it. <laughs> See, I've, already, I've already done unbearable I can't do unbearable again this is unbearable okay <laughs> Theon it's your turn yay after that un... <laughs> no, I'm joking uh, okay let's see so I am going to move up here to where I can see I can see him right now, correct? Oh yeah, you can see him. Do I have any kind of like advantage on my cast because he's on the ground? I'm not sure of that. Um, I don't think you gain I don't think you gain advantage on spell attacks from a distance if they're prone. Okay. No, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm just if checking. you if you do anything, if like if you do something with like a deck save, I'll give him disadvantage because he is yeah. prone, so he would have disadvantage on that. So depending on what you do, I will take the prone into account. Huh. Because, okay. 
Well, then I will probably end up doing Ice Knife then. I cast Ice Knife. You send forth your Icy Knife. Okay, so hit or miss, the shard explodes. And so they have to do a deck save. All right, so he's got to do a deck save that I'm going to give him disadvantage on. I'm glad you found your bearings, Thorin. Theon. I still have not yet. Uh, he rolled a 15 plus 1, so he made his 16 deck save. Yeah, I'm going to say it's it's easier to hit something that's lying down, especially something this big. Okay, I'll give you advantage on that. But so I also you, did my you attack. You do deal these seven. Hmm? I also did my attack as ten. So. Well, yes, but I'm saying this large creature that's on its back, you could probably hit it with a nice knife relatively easily. So I'll, you did your seven damage. I also feel like I typed an ice knife wrong. I think they take the 2d6 damage no matter what. So. I'll look it up. If, if, the, if the attack hits, they took the 2d6 no matter what. Well, it, no, it, if the... Yeah, they take the 2d6 no matter what. Oh, no, 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 no. They they must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 2d6 cold damage. So it's oh. two different checks. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's two, it yeah, you're right. It's two different things. It's two different attacks. I just looked it up. Yeah. Poopy. Okay, I'm just looking up the prone condition. You didn't understand your own ability. How embarrassing. Uh... That's why I cast okay, it. Okay, so you know weak. what? That one was pretty good, Joe. Wait, what did he say? Oh, oh embarrassing. embarrassing. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. That was possibly the best one. <laughs> okay, so the an attack one roll would be better. Uh, an attack roll against the creature has advantage if the attacker is within five feet of the creature. Otherwise, the attack roll has disadvantage. So, no, ten misses. Okay, so the the ten misses, which means the seven piercing damage is gone, uh, but it would still continue in that direction, which means it would hit the ground, it would explode. He succeeded on the deck save, so he doesn't take the cold damage. Because he rolled out of the way, the bastard. <laughs> well, it, the, this creature is just hardy enough that it seems yeah, yeah. like that exposure to the cold didn't deal any sufficient enough damage to, to harm it. I'm good. All right, so you've uh, moved, you've done your action, you do anything else? Um, uh, no, I'm not. Alrighty. Honos, you're up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move over here for no particular reason and pick up nothing. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. Do I see him picking up that dagger? Make a perception check. Uh, uh, Honos, make a sleight of hand check. Oh god, perception check. Here we oh. go! I no great! I Drax should... making a perception check, guys! Oh, wow. I should also warn you, I now have plus 10 to uh, deception and stealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I figured I'd still try to take the check. I could have got a natural wow. 20 and gotten a uh, 19. Uh, unfortunately, no, you do not, you do not notice didn't even feel the breeze. <laughs> I, I didn't even know where Honos was. <laughs> and you move up to... Are you climbing onto the rock next to Husk? Yep. Okay, so you're up on the rock. Uh, make an athletics check. Or acrobatics. I'll let you decide. Okay, so you definitely leap up, get yourself on a foot and a handhold, and haul yourself up a little further, and you are perched on the rock, actually right next to Hosk, who kind of looks at you and nods. But kind of like, alright, that was pretty good kind of look. Dash and move forward one more. Alright, so you're, you're going to use your action dagger. to dash, and yeah. you're going to be there? Yeah. No, I'm going to use my, my minor to dash. Ah, okay, so your bonus action, and you're going to throw so which dagger? Uh, just a normal one. Normal dagger? Okay, make your attack roll. Dagger, dagger, dagger. Okay, it connects. 
So you throw your dagger forward, and it, uh, there is a, a blown open chunk of its kind of neck and chest where Mindardus' arrow hit it. And you whip your dagger and actually bury it into the flesh of that area. Bury, you say? <laughs> I did. I did say bury. <laughs> oh, no. We need to just bury this. <laughs> no. No. You, you can't use the it. exact same one twice. I just did. All right. The bears go. And the bears move right. 40 feet. Yeah. HPG, uh, that's not a pun. <laughs> <laughs> We're I'm looking forward to the, the next barrier. This is unbearable. Nope. The bear <laughs> barrier is Didn't unbearable. you use that one last time, you? <laughs> I keep using it. <laughs> um, yeah, bears move 40 feet, and I, and I, I do a hold attack thing uh, to, if I get in range, to immediately bite any bad thing, be it. Well, they're independent. Of- yeah, they, they act independently, so you, they will follow your orders, but you have to state exactly what you want them to do. I want them to bite everything that's bad. Okay, so they're either going to stay there and hold and prep their bite, or they can dash and get closer. Oh, can they dash? If anything can dash. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, let's let's put them closer then. Okay. Better idea. Um. Yeah. All right. Damn, Morris, all of a sudden, a small squad of bears is appears at your left. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Can one of them? Can one of them scratch me? Are you? Can is that something? Uh, they, they would have to be ordered by Sorwin to do that. Make one scratch me. I, I'll make one scratch me with my bonus action. I didn't use last turn. Yeah. I, uh, I think they that. both all they both did a, a an action to dash, so they none of them have attacks to scratch you. Uh, do they have bonus actions to like? Not like sharpen their claw on my back. They don't Wait. have bonus actions to attack you. <laughs> to my knowledge, bears cannot attack with a bonus action. We can train them after this. We'll make that a trick. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that ends that turn. The troll is going to haul itself up using 15 feet of movement to get up using another 15 feet of movement to climb on top of the rock. So it is once again standing on top of the rock. It does not hurt its back anymore. Its back is fine. No one cares. It's going to die anyways. It's about to get fucked Well, it, it is probably like eight feet up on a rock. And it is going to... Hmm. Okay. It is going to jump at... Morris and the closest bear. Thank God. <laughs> oh, you rolled a 19. Okay. Uh, so, Morris, I need you to make a strength saving throw, and one of these bears is going to make a strength saving throw. Uh, what's the bear strength? Yeah, I know you posted the stats yep. a while ago. Hold on, I'll post it or I'll get it. Bear strength is 15 plus 2. Or it's, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, as this troll lands, it, it kind of extends one leg and with one of its landing legs actually manages to push the bear over. And so the, the first bear is knocked prone. Oh. Do 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 bear hurt its back. Okay. Uh, and you rolled a natural twenty for your strength saving throw. Mm-hmm. So this this creature it jumps into you and it hurls its weight. This the enormity of its mass lands on you. What you notice is as it pulled itself up onto the rock, the wound with the dagger in it, the dagger actually falls out because it's pushed out of the flesh as you see damage on this creature begin to knit and sew itself back together. Uh Uh-oh. 
Hmm. Well, boy, it, it does looks this, like we need to attack it harder. It does this leaping attack. Uh, now, you are not knocked prone, Morris, and you are not pushed back. But you have... You are, are essentially considered grappled. Uh-oh. Can I attack while grappled? You can. I believe your attacks are at disadvantage, though. Uh, let me check the condition again. All right, and that is going to end the troll's turn. Uh, so, Morris, it's your turn now. Medardus is going to take another shot with his bow. Uh, it doesn't say anything about disadvantage on attacks, I don't think. Oh, no, I think it's just that he, um, he can't... Wow, okay, Medardus got rolled a natural 20. Oh, shit. Actually, something did happen before the end of that turn. Because I forgot that bitch has multi-attack. Alright, so uh, it also would have followed up with And I'm going to say that it gets to make one attack with its claw. Uh, against you, Morris, that is a 13 to hit. He misses. Okay, uh, and you didn't... No, you, you didn't do any reckless attacks or anything like that. Okay, so he does not get advantage. Mm -hmm. Ooh, actually, if you're grappled, maybe he does. I don't think so. I think it just keeps me in place. It just keeps him in place, I'm pretty sure. Yes, it just keeps him in place. Okay, so the attack misses. All right, and that is going to end the troll's turn. Okay, so Mindardus made his attack with the bow. He go to natural 20. Uh, Morris, uh, yeah, Morris, it's your turn. I'm going to reckless attack this bitch. Okay, make your reckless attack. Now you're, you're regular rage now, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm not frenzied. Okay, you're not frenzied, okay. Yeah, I can't afford to be exhausted during this time. Okay, so the first attack hits, the second attack misses. Yep. Uh, let's see. So that's a total of 12 damage. What's the... Uh, it okay. should be 11. 9. Oh, yes. Yeah, so sorry, 11. You're right. Unless math has changed in the last hour. Nope. Numbers are still numbers. We're in base 9. Okay, so that ends Morris's turn. All right, it is Hosk's turn. All right, so Hosk leaps off of the rock that he's on, kind of twisting in the air, his lower body flipping over top of his upper body, and he lands actually on the troll itself, barely managing to hang on, kind of grappling with one hand. He then reaches down and slams his elbow against the back of this creature's skull, dealing that much damage. The troll itself takes the impact and then kind of snarls and looks up at him, trying to reach up and claw at him. Store when you're up. Uh... I guess I'm just going to move forward a little bit to like here and in my turn. Okay. Um... Are you issuing any orders to your bears? Uh, kill. Bite, bite, bite. Okay. Bite many times. Once again, the bears all grunt in unison. All right, you can move yourself. Yeah. Theon, you're up. Okay. You currently do not have sight on the troll. It jumped off from the rock that it had climbed up on, and uh, it is now concealed behind the large rock that Honos is still standing on. But I 
do know where it is, though, right? You have a strong inclination as to where it is. Okay. Well, I'm going to move to here to check to see where he went. All right. And as you clear around the outside of the rock, you see the troll has Hosk on top of it. And he appears to have just been kind of pulling his arm back from having delivered an attack. And it is staring down a group of bears, Morris and Honos nearby, perched on top of a rock. Okay. Well, <clears throat> seeing this. Uh, Honos, you're on deck. How hurt does it look? Uh, it looks like it's taken quite a bit of damage. But you, and you oh. know this about trolls, that they do regenerate health. Ooh. There's also something, there's some there's, creeping there's, bit of knowledge in the back of your mind. You know something else about these trolls, but you can't remember it at the moment. Uh, does everybody else know the restoration thing? Can I use it as a bonus action to tell everybody that be careful, trolls regenerate health? Uh, you certainly can say that with your bonus action, yes. Sweet. I tell everybody that with my bonus action, and then cast Scorching Ray. All right, make your attack rolls. I, 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 I love my rolls, man. My rolls are like godsends today. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's a 20, a 14, and a 15. Sure thing. Okay, so the first and the, the third attack hit. So you... Wow, those damage rolls! Oh, you didn't realize it. At least they hit. Yeah, and it's a freaking level 2 spell. <laughs> Down the drain. So as... Theon, as you point forward and these rays leap forward from your hand, the yellow-orange energy slamming into the side of this creature. You have a moment of realization in your brain, like fire! And as the, as the flames seem to spread across this creature, and they actually seem to adhere to its flesh, like there's some element of the creature that is very, very mildly flammable. Uh, Morris, you notice that the wounds that were slowly starting to repair themselves halt. Uh, Honos, you see this as well, being so close. And the bears notice it too. Am I close enough to melee from the rock? Wait, it notices... Uh, you are not close enough to melee from the rock, no. It notices that the, the fire rock? stopped? No, you notice. You remember. If I were to move there, could I melee? Uh, you know what? It is a large creature. I'll say that you could probably hit it from there, yeah. It's okay. on the very edge of your range, but you can just get it. Dagger, dagger. So, just to clarify, HPG, I noticed Stop. that fire stops his health regen. Well, you when, when you send the fire out and you see the reaction it has, it clicks in your head. You're like, that's the thing that you were forgetting. Fire stops its regeneration. Cool. Dagger, dagger, sneak attack. Is the troll wearing clothes, or is he bare? Uh, it has a uh, rag it has a ragged, ragged piece of cloth around its uh, its loins. Okay. So sixteen and seventeen, dealing eight and ten. And the seek attack is twelve, so twenty-two in total. Yep. All right. So Honos, from his position, is able to reach forward and nail two daggers, actually catching it both in the, the side of its neck where it's this kind of thick neck meets with this brutish jawline. Uh, and the creature it recoils and you can see blood pour out of the wound in its neck, which is not sealing as a result of having been exposed to the flame. The creature is looking... Trolls looking pretty rough. Bears, you're up. Uh, okay. Bears. Bear with him for a moment. He's got a bear bite. Okay, so yeah, you you. I'm gonna do my bite rolls. Okay. 
We'll do all yeah, all your multi attack rolls. So you make what eight attacks? Uh, yeah. I was also so to roll four d twenties first, right? You have to roll eight d twenties for the two attacks for each bear. Okay. Roll eight. Do I get adv- uh, any plus on that? Um, that I'm going to say that, yeah, you get advantage on those because this thing is now surrounded. Oh, yeah. It has Hosk yeah, on 16, its back. 16 d20. So I roll 16 d20? Yeah, what? well, yeah, you know what? I'll just, I'll pair them up as you roll them. So yeah, roll 16 d20. And then whatever the, ba- the bear's proficiency and strength is. I think it's a total plus four. I mean, I can roll them all no, at once It's here. plus three to hit for its weapons, so proficiency plus strength oh, mod okay. is apparently plus three. So I should just roll 16 as we go, and like just one at a time? Just, no, just just roll, type in slash roll 16 d20. And then with the plus four. Yeah. Holy cow. Three. Oh, 16 d20? That was with plus four. I, thought it was, I think it's both. Well, no, it just tags on the four at the end, which doesn't okay. matter. Okay. Okay, so... One miss, one crit, one hit, two hits, three hits, four hits, five hits, six hits, one of them a crit. So how do I roll this damage? I roll for okay, six. Okay, so roll. So the the first one is the bite, or the first one is the claw. First one is the bite, so I roll six d six plus twelve. Okay, so roll right. for three. Roll for three bite attacks, and the first one's a crit. Bite attack. I don't know what to do with crit. I don't know how to do that. Just roll. Roll the damage. Roll the damage. Yeah. So roll the damage for a bite. Yeah. Uh, okay. 1d6. 46 plus, plus 6. Yeah, 46. Boop. Okay, so 17. Uh, all right. Let me just read this last thing. How do you want to do this? Uh, I want them to just jump on it and like bite its legs and it, yeah let's go for two for its legs all for the legs let's take this thing down all right so under sorwin's command these recently apparated from the earth itself bears begin to swarm around this large troll which kind of whipping its head back and forth lashing out with claws and tooth but it's seemingly harried by not only the lizard folk on its back, which beat it in the head really hard, there is also the raging barbarian swinging its axe and this cadre of bears. And collectively, this creature is just torn into pieces. The bears, like, ripping limbs off of the creature itself, which some of which still continue to kick and sputter with life until eventually all the limbs stop moving. The, the gasping writhing body of the troll eventually ceases to be animate and stops moving. The sizzling smell of some of the flesh as the flames finally die off is rancid and horrible. I'm gonna go get, grab the armor and tell say everybody, let's get the fuck out of here. And that's where we'll end the game for tonight. Woo! Oh yeah! <laughs> Thanks again, HPG. No problem. Fun, fun, fun.